I gave this book three stars, and it's not that I dislike it, because I do quite like this series. I like the concept a lot, and I really like all of the characters. But there is something that makes it really hard for me to connect to them, to really care, because I do find myself for having to force myself to pick this up, having to force myself to read it. And I think it, it's a little better than the first book in the first series, um, which is also Sandry's book. I, I love Sandry as a character. She's one of my favorite characters, but I do think this is probably one of the weakest books in this series. I think one of my big issues is that I still don't understand Sandry's magic in general. Like, this is book five in this universe that has dealt with these characters. This is the fifth book Sandry has been a part of, and yet it feels like I have really no concept of what Sandry is capable of doing, or how it's different than what other Stitch Witches can do. Added to that, this book also brings in a concept of something called unmagic, which is basically the opposite of magic, whereas magic is light, magic is creation, unmagic is kind of nothingness and destruction, and I don't feel like it's dealt with very well. It feels very poorly explained. I really don't understand what it is apart from it is literally the opposite of magic. It is nothing. They just keep calling it like nothingness and darkness and shadow and like I, I really don't understand that concept. It's never mentioned in any of the other books as far as I'm aware and it really does feel like something that's just thrown in out of nowhere. Not really a fan of that and it's just that I don't understand what Sandry can do and I don't understand how what Sandry does in regards to magic is so different than what her teacher Lark, who is also a Stitch Witch, does. And I just, I, I feel like there should be more explanation and more understanding by this point in the world. It feels a little bit like it's just made up as it goes along, which it, it might be for, for real. Like that is what this whole series feels like, that it's just made up as it goes along and there's not a whole lot of prior development and plan for where it's going to go. But I, I do like a lot of things about the series. It involves the introduction of dancing magic, which is cool. It's a, it's a cool concept to bring that in and see how Sandry teaches someone with a magic so different to her own. I also really adore Sandry's relationship with her uncle, who is the ruler of this country, because Sandry is royalty, and I think that's something that it gets constantly brought up in the books, but it's also one of those things that's just really easy to forget that she is related to like closely related to the rulers of these countries and it, it's really well done. I love her uncle's character. This book also is a little bit of a police procedural. She works very closely with the police in trying to track down who the murderers are, where they can be, and it's not so much a mystery, like the emphasis is very much on the magic in all four of the books in this series, but there's also the crime element. And I really do like how she dealt with the police system in this world. And I really think this book kind of served as the inspiration maybe for the Terrier series, the Becca Cooper series that's set in a, a different world that she came out with uh, like 20 years later or something. It has a lot of similarities in terms of the structure of law enforcement and I did like that. But overall I just, I had to force myself through this book and it, it wasn't very fun. The second book in the series is Street Magic. It follows Briar, who's the plant mage of the four, and this deals a lot with the politics of gangs and gang warfare, and Briar finds a young stone mage named Evie. Evie is a street kid, and Briar spends a lot of the book trying to teach Evie and learn how to teach Evie, and, and also extract themselves from this gang warfare, and this noble woman who is kind of uh, putting her hand in the mix when it comes to the gangs fighting each other. It's kind of interesting, but also I gave it three stars because I, I feel like the gang warfare aspect and the politics of that isn't really well handled. It doesn't feel like she delves, Tamar Pierce delves very deeply into that. Like, there's all these kind of depths you can go to when it comes to the politics of gangs, but it feels very shallow where it's just like, we're gonna fight you because you fight us, and it doesn't actually deal with any of the politics of it. It's really just like, the gangs are fighting, and who needs a reason because they're gangs and that's what gangs do. And I wish she delved a whole lot more into that because I do feel like she really could have. It's just one of those situations where it seems like the choices that are made are too easy and the concepts are too simplistic and she could have done so much more with it. I'm also not the biggest fan of Evie as a character. Um, I don't I don't really like Sandry's student that much either, but it seems important to note when it comes to Evie because Evie is the only one of the students so far who has become a main character in her own right. She actually has her own book now and she continuously pops up in 
the other books, whereas the other students of these characters don't. Evie's kind of like the chosen one in that regard, and I really don't find her to be a particularly interesting character. She's fine, but it doesn't feel like she really contributes a whole lot, so it always just frustrates me a little when I see her popping up so much. But this book was fine. Um, I don't have too much to say about it or any of these. You know, it's just another three stars. It was fine. It was decent. It wasn't bad, but I, I don't particularly enjoy having to force myself through books, having to stop myself from skimming, because there's so much that's like very quickly introduced into these books that if you do skim, you, you can miss something and get confused very, very quickly. So this was another three stars. But then we get to book three, Cold Fire, which is Dodge's book, and this I actually gave four stars. This was by far my favorite of this quartet, and honestly my favorite of the eight books I've read in this universe so far. And ironically enough, Dodge's book was also the only book I gave four stars in the first quartet, which is funny because I, I don't particularly love Dodge's character. I quite like her. I like all four of these main characters. But she's not my favorite. I much prefer Sandry, but it seems like Dodge's books as a whole are so much stronger than Sandry's. Dodge's book, this book, was the only one in the series that felt like a well-crafted story that I was ever excited to sit down and read, that I was ever really enjoying. This also deals with a crime element. There's an arsonist that is loose in the town where Daja is staying, and Daja and her students and her teacher work to track down the arsonist because it, they live in wooden houses. Everything they build comes from wood because that is the resource that they have most available. So arson is a very terrible thing there. And it's really, I, I really think it's well done. You know who the arsonist is, not from the very beginning, but from very early on it's confirmed who the arsonist is for the reader, although Daja doesn't know, and I think the way it explores these characters is so well done and so well crafted, and you really get to delve into who they are as people and what it means and what it means to them that this person is the arsonist and why they're the arsonist, and it's just like a fascinating book that I, I really thoroughly enjoyed, and I think it's the only of these four books that I thoroughly enjoyed. I think it only took me about two days to read this, whereas the others were like, I was forcing myself through and sitting after sitting just because like I never wanted to pick them up. This I was excited to pick up. I was excited to read. I read it out of enjoyment. Like I was just enjoying myself so I kept going and I, I would recommend this. I don't know. I think the series is worth it for like the good books in it. Um, you have to struggle through some of the kind of mediocre ones but the good books are just really good and this is such a well-crafted story. The fourth and final book in this series is Shatterglass. This is Triss's book, and this deals with Triss, who has a student with lightning magic, who is about, I forget how much older, he's significantly older than her, he's like about 20, I believe, and that's an interesting dynamic. It, they're also investigating a serial killer who is murdering inter entertainers. There's a caste system, this is, this book is set in a country that I think is sort of inspired by India and there's a caste system and the caste system of entertainers are, are being murdered. I gave this three stars. I like the story of this more than the first two. I think the story itself was compelling and interesting enough that I was getting through it very quickly, but my biggest issue was how much it othered the people of this culture. Because Triss is not a part of this culture. Triss comes from the north. She was just visiting. All of these books are set in different places because they're visiting with their teachers. And in this India-inspired country, I forget what it's called, but it really doesn't matter because in my head it's just India. It just has a lot of criticism of their culture, of the system, of the caste system specifically, in the way they deal with death. And it, it could have been interesting, but it very much fell into just this super judgmental white savior trope, whereas there's nothing that she likes about this culture. There's nothing where this culture is allowed to have its own voice. It's just incredibly othering. The only character who has a point of view in this, who is actually a part of this culture, has A, the smallest point of view, and B, also doesn't really agree with it. So it feels very wrong that you're just getting all these criticisms and judgment of this culture that isn't given its own voice at any point. And I'm not saying I agreed with what was going on, but there's a way to criticize a culture and way to criticize aspects of it without just completely othering an entire group of people. And I think actually Dodge's book, that was really well done because Dodge doesn't necessarily agree with a lot of things going on in Namorn, which is where she is, but it's handled really well because 
sometimes she's othering them, but also sometimes Daja is the one who's othered in the book because she is the visitor. She is the foreigner in that situation. And it was a really interesting, well done dynamic. And I think in this book, it was it was just white savior trope. It was, Triss was right, and she was told to be nice to this culture, but like, even though you wish she was a little nicer, you're still on her side the whole book. You're like, Triss is the one who's right. Like, these are screwed up things happening in this whole culture. And it never has a voice of its own. That's what I keep coming back to. It's never like, allowed to have a voice, even in the narration. Even like, not from a specific character, but the narration never does anything but other this group of people. And I didn't enjoy it for that. That did make it a little bit unpleasant. But I think story-wise, it had a more compelling story than the first two. Not as good as Dodge's book, but I said I did still enjoy it. And this left me very excited to continue on to the next book in this universe, which is The Will of the Empress, which is set four years after the series when they're all 18. I love that book, so reading this whole series, it's kind of worth it just to get to that book and to realize how much I do love Dodge's books more than anything else. So let me know down below if you've read the Circle Open series by Tamara Pierce and what you thought of it if you have. And as always, thank you so much for watching and I will see y'all again soon.